morning, Metalheads Internet. Welcome to a new episode of the Metal Meltdown. And today we're looking at the 13th studio album from Testament entitled Titans of Creation. Hypothetically, if we were to expand the big four of American thrash metal into the big five, Testament is the band I would want to add. Sure, they may have showed up a little bit late to the party, having released their debut album in 1987, by which point the Big Four have collectively released several classics, such as Ride the Lightning, Master of Puppets, Rain and Blood, Spreading the Disease, Peace Sells But Who's Buying. But Testament began making up for that last time the moment their debut album dropped, from there on rapidly releasing a slew of incredibly influential, iconic, and highly entertaining thrash records. Their sophomore album, The New Order, in particular, ranks still today as one of my all-time favorite 80s thrash records. But truthfully, the main reason I would want to add Testament over the likes of, say, Exodus and Overkill comes down to the very simple fact that there isn't a single 80s metal band that has remained as active, as determined, as creative, and as consistent in quality as Testament. I mean, as the 90s raged on and thrash bands either stuck their head in the sand or looked to outside realms for survival and success, Testament, on the other hand, continued to challenge themselves as songwriters and performers, bringing in new influences from the emerging worlds of death metal and groove metal, while still retaining and even sharpening their thrash metal sound. To the point nowadays where they're not only outperforming every single band we've mentioned so far, but they're outperforming the modern wave of new thrash metal. Like, don't get me wrong, I love Municipal Waste, Toxic Holocaust, Power Trip, Iron Regan, Revocation, but I can very honestly say that I would honestly pick The Brotherhood of the Snake over a good majority of the albums these bands have released thus far. Testament is just that goddamn good. And they remain that goddamn good on this album, Titans of Creation, arriving in the wake of what I have coined in the last year as a thrash metal drought, and also arriving in the wake of a particularly troubling time for Testament, as Chuck Billy and Steve DiGorgio are both testing positive for COVID-19. Obviously, these are things Testament has no control over. They can't control the quality of modern thrash metal, nor can they control a literal pandemic. But, unintentionally, these things do weirdly kind of come together to make Testament feel all the more urgent and immediate on this album, making it possibly one of the most triumphant records of the year so far, even if it is by accident. Then this knowledge just immediately creates this kind of fuck you energy for me that adds to everything that Testament consistently do so well, leading to some incredibly delicious and cathartic material, such as the oddly timely tracks World War III and Symptoms, the former of which masterfully delivering Testament's now signature brand of infectious and hyper-technical thrash metal, while the latter of which sees the band slowing things down to this hefty mid pace groove metal hearkening to that of Lamb of God with some of the biggest and heaviest riffs on the record. There are other moments across the record as well where Testament look to their friends and peers for inspiration. Take for instance the track Ishtar's Gate, borrowing the throbbing bass and drive of classic Megadeth, particularly in Chuck Billy's kind of nasally semi-spoken word vocals. Or a track like Night of the Witch, which in its most hellish and powerful moments even borrows from the likes of the Black Dahlia Murder, with an onslaught of pure guitar pyrotechnics and some pretty ferocious vocals from Chuck Billy. I think Alex Skjolnik has been listening to a lot of Revocation as of late because there are a couple tricks pulled out of his bag that do sound a lot like the high octane all over the place guitar work of one Dave Davidson. The aforementioned Night of the Witch in particular has quite a few moments that could have very easily fit on the band's self-titled record. Even City of Angels showcases a more ominous and subtly progressive side of Testament with slower, almost doom metal inspired riffs, airy guitar passages, and some cleaner vocals contrasting with big explosive bursts of pure heavy metal fury. And god, I just can't believe how fucking good everyone sounds. I mean, the, the guitar work from Alex Skolnick and Eric Peterson is like perfection. It's, it's beautiful. It's pure thrash metal guitar pyrotechnic porn. It's like the world's most beautiful fireworks display in a sonic form. 
Steve DiGorgio and Gene Hoagland, they play like goddamn beasts. It's got to be one of the best rhythm sections in any metal band period right now. And Chuck Bailey's really pushing himself on this one. I would argue the most he's visibly pushed himself on a record in a very long time. Unfortunately, I think he pushes himself a little bit too far. There are a lot of rough notes here and there. The pre-chorus for Dream Deceiver in particular stands out as a somewhat awkward moment. But bless the guy for still trying and pushing, especially at his age. It really is incredible just how confident and determined Testament really are with this record. But unfortunately, I think they've officially crossed the line where they're a little bit too confident, a little bit too determined. And as such, I think they've forgotten that editing a great song is just as important as writing and performing a great song. For instance, the album as a whole is 60 minutes long, and it doesn't need to be. It has 12 tracks when it could make do with nine. And not only would most of the songs benefit from having at least a minute's worth of fat trimmed off, there are a handful of tracks that you could probably cut up to two and a half to three minutes off of because they just run for far too long. The aforementioned Night of the Witch and City of Angels, as much as I enjoy them, are great examples of this, as is opening track Children of the Next Level. Which, as a result of its placement, unfortunately opens the album on a pretty bloated note. And this is without even mentioning that, even though it's inherently a well-made track, it does stand out as one of the more uninspired and predictable cuts on the record. None of this actively derails this thrash metal-fueled roller coaster. It's still a thoroughly enjoyable and entertaining ride. But Titans of Creation is like Thunder Mountain, whereas Brotherhood of the Snake was Space Mountain. Nothing wrong with Thunder Mountain, but I prefer Space Mountain. Ultimately though, if the worst thing I can truly say about an album is that the band get a little bit cocky and overconfident and try and cram pack it with as much great material as possible, then that's not really that bad of a thing. It would be the literal equivalent to complaining that the pizza guy got your order wrong and unintentionally delivered another pizza. Like, yeah, you're probably not going to sit down and eat two fucking pizzas. It is probably too much, but it's still pizza. It's still pretty damn fucking good. And this is still pretty damn fucking good. I'd happily give this a massively enthusiastic 3.5 out of 5. Testament fans are going to be absolutely elated, as are thrash fans who share my thoughts of the aforementioned thrash metal drought we have experienced in the last few years. There's just so much energy and power and pure metallic joy in this record. And it's an especially cathartic and even uplifting album to have right now in the wake of, of COVID-19, you know? If, if Chuck Billy and Steve DiGorgio can champion through it and still release this album and supposedly still prepare for a North American tour in the next two months, then fuck it. We can sure as hell pull through. Now, with that particular thought in mind, I will admit that I have no clue what the future of Testament actually holds. But, frankly, if it still sounds anything like this in three, four years, I'll be more than satisfied. 3.5 out of 5, an incredibly enjoyable album. Definitely check it out. And that is it! For the Metal Meltdown, I'm not an expert, nor do I claim to be, so what do you think? Do you like this record? Do you not like this record? And what do you want to hear from me next? Thank you for watching. Make sure you press subscribe right there so you get updates on the Metal Meltdown immediately. And you have yourself a fantastic fucking day.